Prince Harry has released his latest Netflix project. But there is a glaring omission that shows he is deliberately ignoring an inconvenient reality. I often feel like I've seen this before in my job. I barely recovered from watching the almost six hours of anguish grimacing and syrupy iPhone snaps that composed Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Sussex's first Netflix documentary series, when the Duke returned. He's back on screen. Back on the streaming service and back to making the royal family seem as outdated and irrelevant as he can. On Thursday, Eat, the Duke's Heart of Invictus documentary series premiered. Five episodes following the path to the 2022 Invictus Games in The Hague and the personal challenges and journeys of a few of the participants. Be prepared, you will need tissues and lots of them to watch Heart because it is, alternately, deeply touching, distressing and powerful. I cried over and over again, sobbing like a tamu kettle. It's worth watching just for Ukrainian volunteer medic Yulia Tyra Payevska. The footage she recorded inside a frontline field hospital is perhaps the most impactful and haunting thing I have ever seen. But we are not here to discuss these amazing people and the resilience and strength they demonstrate constantly but about Harry the executive producer and what looks like a very intentional effort at some DIY historical rewriting. There is one thing that is almost completely missing. That is neatly avoided, and entirely glossed over in Heart of Invictus, the essential role the royal family, and Harry's belonging to that family, has had in the Invictus story. If someone were to watch Heart without knowing anything about the games, then they would leave this series with the firm belief that the whole incredible thing was made by a man named Harry who has kids and dogs. The same Invictus origin story is repeated, Harry goes to war in Afghanistan is sent home after a second tour and then decides to do something to help veterans and service members. At this point in his life, he says to the camera, all I was trying to figure out and navigate was, I have this platform. I just had this experience. What can I do with this? Dot. What does he mean by this platform? He never explains. The words royal family or monarchy are barely mentioned in all of heart, if at all. I completely missed them. The second episode begins with archival footage of him delivering a speech at the 2018 Veterans Mental Health Conference at King's College London and clips of him, hosting the 2017 Buckingham Palace Garden Party for the Not Forgotten Association, which supports service people and veterans. The R word, Royal, is completely ignored. When I joined the military, mental health, mental illness, was a taboo word, Harry says in heart. One of the things I'm proud of is the work, Invictus competitor, David Wiseman, and I did giving talks to people inside the military. If there's a stigma within the military, then there will be stigma within society. So if we want to end the stigma within society, we have to set an example. And if someone didn't know any better, they would think that it was Harry and only Harry who within the royal family had taken on the issue of mental health and pursued it with passion. But that is not the whole story or the complete picture. Not by a long shot. William and Kate, the Prince and Princess of Wales, have been completely erased from the story of the royal family and mental health work. One of the first organizations that the Princess became patron of was children's mental health charity Place 2B, and she later added the Anna Freud Center and Maternal Mental Health Alliance. It was not just Harry but his brother and sister-in-law, the three of them equally and together, who used their joint royal foundation to launch Heads Together in 2016. That same year, the three of them posed for amusingly goofy photos wearing headbands to support the initiative and also released a video of them sitting around a picnic table in Kensington Palace's private gardens talking about how it started. It was your idea, Harry tells Kate. The princess then says, because it's a common theme, Mental health seemed to connect all the different areas we were working in. Heads Together started a national video campaign with a series of prominent Brits to urge people to speak freely about depression, anxiety and suicidal thoughts. The impact of this work was evident. In 2019, and ad narrated by the Waleses, Harry and Meghan the Duchess of Sussex, that promoted the Every Mind Matters website, was so popular and so many people wanted to visit it that it broke down. That same year, William participated in a documentary about mental health and shared his experience of feeling pain like no other pain after losing his mother Diana, Princess of Wales when he was only 15 years old. 
I could continue, but you understand the point, it was not only Harry but also William and Kate who worked hard at the mental health front. However, all of this is absent from heart. With the story being told as if Harry was the only HRH to lead the way to change the dialogue around and to remove the stigma from mental health. Any role played by anyone else is ignored and the contributions of the Waleses on this issue are completely left out. I'm not trying to diminish what Harry has accomplished with Invictus, he is unquestionably the driving force and the heart of this organization. But there is no mention of the fact that, for example, the Royal Foundation was instrumental in supporting the development of the Invictus Games back in 2014, according to a press release from that time. With the Invictus Games, the Duke has created something amazing that has transformed and is still transforming countless lives. That is more of an achievement than 99.9% .9 of the world can claim and the 38-year-old former working royal deserves praise, recognition, and some kind of shiny award for doing so. To watch heart is to see what a powerful force the Duke can be. Of how natural and sincere and good he is at listening to and helping those who are suffering. But failing to make even the slightest reference in heart to the part that his family has played seems petty and a bit of a clear evasion. To Harry's way of telling it. How he got to where he is now with the games feels a bit like performing Romeo Juliet but only reading one half of the star-crossed lover's lines. It's only part of the picture. I'm not trying to take away from the Duke's achievements but he doesn't do himself any favors by not giving a more complete picture of how this happened and being honest about the fact that it was his role in the royal family that enabled him to create this wonderful thing that is the INV. Ictus Games. It may not fit with his anti-firm stance these days but it was the influence, connections and authority of the crown that made the games feasible in the first place. After Megxit. It may be a hard truth but it was not only him but also his brother and sister-in-law who have been working hard for years to help the countless millions with depression, anxiety and other mental disorders. The Duke may have a lot of complaints against the Waleses and many issues to settle with them but he could still have, even subtly, given them credit and acknowledged their role and their work instead of deliberately snubbing them. Still, watch heart. Shed a tear. Apart from the many scenes where we have to watch Harry doing Zoom meetings, the rest of the series is as uplifting and inspiring as you would expect. And believe me, you will need the tissues. Remember to subscribe to British Royal Daily Updates YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell, this way you will be notified when we drop a video, stay safe.